July 20th, 2019 is exactly 50 years since humans first set foot on another celestial body, the moon. Some of you are old enough to remember that day. Maybe you even watched it live on television. For many of us, though, the event is history that we did not get to experience. Whether or not you were around that summer day in 1969, we all know what happened. Commander Neil Armstrong and Lunar Module Pilot Edwin Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon, while Command Module Pilot Michael Collins stayed in lunar orbit. Six hours after touchdown, Armstrong became the first person to step on the moon, uttering the famous phrase, that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. Of all the famous firsts in history, this one was the most witnessed and the most thoroughly documented. Still, even those who know the event well may not be aware of some of the lesser known details of that historic day. A lot of people know that Neil Armstrong was an Eagle Scout, but the other guy who landed with him on the moon that day, Buzz Aldrin, was also a former Boy Scout. In fact, when Neil spoke the first words from the surface of the moon, Houston, Tranquility Base here, the Eagle has landed. The guy on the other end of the line in Houston was an Eagle Scout as well. Changing his call sign from Eagle to Tranquility Base after landing was not part of the mission plan. A few years ago at a meeting at Baylor, I had a chance to talk to Tyler Duke, the Apollo 16 moonwalker who was on duty as Capcom during that historic first moon landing. I asked him if he knew about the Tranquility Base name change ahead of time. He famously tripped over the word in his response to Neil Armstrong. He said that Neil had talked to him about it privately before launch, so it wasn't actually a surprise to him. He only tripped over his words because of the emotion of the moment. July 20th, 1969 was a Sunday. Following the landing, Buzz Aldrin radioed the following message. I'd like to take this opportunity to ask every person listening in, whoever and wherever they may be, to pause for a moment and contemplate the events of the past few hours, and to give thanks in his or her own way. Aldrin, a Presbyterian elder, then performed the first and only religious ceremony held on the moon. Using a kit prepared for him by his pastor before the flight, he took communion. This was not advertised at the time of the mission, in part because NASA had already been sued by the American Atheists Group for reading from Genesis during an Apollo 8 lunar flyby the year before. No matter what happens, when we finally return to the moon, perhaps eventually erecting communities and places of worship there, it will always be that the first liquid poured on the moon and the first food eaten there were elements of the Holy Communion. Interestingly, for all three Apollo 11 astronauts, the mission was their second and also last spaceflight. If not for the moon landing, Armstrong would still be known for two spaceflight firsts as commander of Gemini 8, which was the first spacecraft to dock with another in orbit. It also suffered the first American in-flight critical systems failure, when a thruster stuck on, producing a dangerously fast roll. Armstrong was able to stop the roll, but the rest of the mission had to be aborted. Collins was the pilot on Gemini 10, docking with two different unmanned Agena spacecraft, including the same one as Gemini 8. Aldrin was the pilot to the very last Gemini flight, Gemini 12. After Apollo 11, all three retired from NASA in 1970-71, seeing few prospects for going into space again. As Gene Cernan took the last steps so far on the lunar surface on Apollo 17, he expressed hope that humans return not too long into the future. It's now going on 47 years since those final steps, and that number will almost certainly surpass 50 years as well before the next steps are taken. But perhaps in the next 5 to 10 years, the people of this generation will finally be able to watch live as a crew of astronauts makes footprints on the moon. <laughs>